Now, remember, I'm now in the mode of solving simultaneously, and we saw before, I've got three equations, two variables, so I can choose. Which equations would you like to do? Which ones feel easily set up? My number one should have a mu at the end, is that right? Uh, oh, of course it should. Absolutely, thank you for picking that up. It's all Greek to me, okay? <laughs> Once we've fixed that up, which equations would you like to fit together? I'd probably rearrange the y equation Oh good, yep, so you've noticed Mrs. Isles, you've got a plus lambda and a minus lambda. Um, Sean, your approach would have worked, absolutely, but it does seem like it's kind of already easy to do. So let's go ahead and do one plus two. And what does that give us? Well, I'm, the, the lambdas have cancelled, so I just get negative 1 over there. And then on the right-hand side, just be careful with your signs there, right? I'm adding the right-hand sides. So if I'm doing this right, I think I've got negative 3 plus 2 mu. Does that look right to you? Okay, I'll add, um, I'll add 3 to both sides, and I'll, I'll, place the, I'll switch the sides as well. So if I'm doing that right, I think I'm getting 2 mu equals 2. So now I've got a value for mu, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, at this point, now my value for mu, I can substitute that into any one of three equations. Which one would you like? Two. Okay, two is fine. Um, let's go into two. So I've got here minus lambda equals two take away one. Um, so obviously there's one on the right-hand side, and I can multiply both sides by negative one, so that gives me this. Okay, let me pause. What were we trying to do again? Trying to show that they intersect. We want to show that they intersect or, or alternatively, they, they may not, right? Now, at this point, I've got a, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a lambda, I've got a mu. Now, to find a point of intersection, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if I wanted to find a point of intersection, the only thing I can do is take lambda and take mu and substitute them back into one of the two equations, okay? But in fact, um, I don't have to find a point of intersection to know whether there is a point of intersection. Can I just say that one more time? I don't have to find a point of intersection to know whether there is one or not. Now, I, I can find the point of intersection if I will, if I want, and in fact, in a, in a few minutes, I'm going to do that. But uh, to know that actually there is a point of intersection, the way that I'd have to do this is I'd have to take this value of mu, this value of lambda, and I'd have to do, um, I'd have to substitute it into both R1 and R2. Now that's doable, but it's a fair bit of work, right? And I'm always seeking the fastest way to do this, okay? There is another way to know whether there's a point of intersection or not without actually finding the point of intersection. Can anyone suggest any ideas for how we might do this? I'll admit, it's a bit of a left turn. <laughs> okay, very good. So there's this third equation here, right? Now, it's important because if you have a look at this third equation, we really have not used it yet in finding out lambda and our mu. Now, when you've got two variables and two equations, provided that the two equations don't represent parallel lines, you'll always find a point of intersection. That's kind of what we were saying before. Do you remember that? In two dimensions, things will always meet unless they're parallel, okay? So in other words, I'll always find a mu and I'll always find a lambda. However, that doesn't mean it actually works with the third equation because two equations will always give you a solution for two variables. What I really need to do is I actually need to take this uh, mu and this lambda and, and substitute them into the third equation. Now, um, if, if I do have a point of intersection, the equation should work, right? It should satisfy all three. But if there is no point of intersection, then what will happen is I'll try to put it into the third equation and it will break. It won't work. It satisfies two, but not the third one, okay? Now, given that at this moment in time, I, I don't know, um, here's what not to do. Don't just take the third equation and put in lambda and mu and let them equal to each other because you don't know. We don't know whether they're equal to one another or not, okay? So what I'm going to do, here's the way I would write it. I would say I'm going to... Sorry, wrong thing. I'm going to now test um, 
equation three because I don't actually know if I'm going to satisfy it or not, right? So I'm gonna say, first, let's do the left-hand side. So that's got a lambda in it, right? So I'm gonna go five plus two, and here's my value for lambda. So what do I get? Three. That's three. And now I test the right-hand side. So this should feel like induction, right? You know when you test the base case? You don't actually know whether the base case works, uh, even though it would be a bit mean and silly for a test writer to give you a, a statement that isn't true for the base case, because then what's the point? Um, but in that case, you've got to look at the left and you've got to look at the right separately. So in this case, my right-hand side is 5 minus 2 mu, which in this case is 1. So this turns out to be 3, which we breathe a sigh of relief as required. So this means that I satisfy equation three. So finally, I can say my value for lambda, my value for mu, they work all the way, x, y, and z, they're all equal. So therefore, r1 and r2 intersect. Because I proved earlier that they're orthogonal, I can complete this statement and I can say at right angles. Does that make sense? Now, uh, just for the sake of completeness, um, I did mention, right, this is not the only way to do it. And when I was sort of mentioning before, we were kind of like, yeah, what, what is the other way, right? So I just want to sort of prove to you that this is faster, what we just did here. It's faster and easier than going the long way around, which is to test that we actually get a point on both lines. You've got to do it for both because you don't know whether it actually is true for both of them. So what I would have to do is I would have to substitute uh, each parameter, lambda and mu, into their respective lines. So I would be substituting lambda into R1. So um, hopefully, I mean, I've, I've scrolled past it, but on your page, you probably have your equation there. So it would give you, I think this is the position vector, and there's my lambda, and then here comes the direction vector, right? So when you simplify that out, you should get, um, if you look at all of your components across, uh, negative 2 and then 1 positive and then that looks like a 3 and then you would have to substitute um, mu into R2 because it's not enough just to find it for one line so again you've got to go back it's got a different position vector and it has a different here comes mu it has a different um, direction vector 3, negative 1, negative 2. And again, you've got to go across, so it looks like we do get the negative 2, 1, 3 as required, okay? So if you just want to do the counting, right? Effectively, what we had to do here was six, um, six equations, as it were, right? You do the x, the y, and the z for R1, and then you do the x, the y, and the z for R2. If you compare that to what we've got up here, even though it's more writing, um, it's actually much less calculation, and so therefore it's much less error prone. So I think that's a preferable technique. Um, what we did here, substituting into the third equation, um, but of course, you know, in another context, if they actually ask you to find the point of intersection, then sorry, no shortcuts, you've actually got to, you've got to do it this way, okay? Um, any questions? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, wonderful. So those are the two examples that I just wanted to show you. You'll encounter a couple of other different kinds of questions uh, when you go through the rest of the exercise, but I thought those are, those are quite important. And the presentation of choices, like uh, which one of these do I do first? Dot product or the point of intersection? Um, which way do I work out whether there's a point of intersection? It's not the same as actually finding the point of intersection, which is a very uh, nuanced difference. And I find that when I encountered this, I didn't realize it when I just did the question myself. I had to be shown.